All right, everybody. I'm back this week. <laughs> Welcome back to Ghost Stories Told from the South. And this is your co-host, Lexi Lebooth. And wow. I am your host, Stephen Lebooth. I've got my partner in crime back, everybody. Sorry yes. about last week. I just really wasn't feeling it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I tried to. I did a good uh, L- uh, Tower of London story. There's like, I think, eight or nine of them. Mm. All together. Then I did another one about 30 minutes into it. I'm like, all right, guys. It just, I don't know. Didn't feel the same without Lexi here. Yeah, sorry about that, too. I, th- I'm i getting busier at work. I'm picking up more shifts. So I'm just exhausted. But she's, um, a, she's becoming a big girl. Yeah. Anyway, so um, today we can actually trade it off how we normally do. My area of... I almost said study. My area of choice today is roller coasters and like amusement parks and stuff like that. Mmm, lovely. So we're picking scary stories from there. So they are from scary theme parks. I got the same old place. I think I'm doing. I think it's uh, London that that area. Um, if I say I'm not gonna say like the places and like where they're from. If I say one we've done, um, I'm sorry. Just cor- like, bear with me. this. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. I'm going to kick it off. I'm going to do two at a time. No, I'm going to lie. I mean, I'm going to lie. I lied. I'm going to do two to three at a time. Depending on how I feel at two, I will add one or let dad go. So, all right. Now let's kick it off. I did not mean to do that. All right. There you go again. This is the Six Flags in New Orleans in Louisiana. Um... This was uh, Six Flags until Hurricane Katrina happened. Um, it flooded the entire city and closed the park in 2005. It never reopened, and it's now one of the attractions that are so creepy, they're off-limits to tourists, so you, can, you can't you explore it. Um, the roller coaster called a Big Easy Ferris Wheel, um, and a bunch of the other ones are deserted. Um, but, it, okay, it's in Louisiana, so it's flooded because of the hurricane. There's snakes and alligators in the waters. So if you, like, do want to go see what's about there, you might get bit by an alligator. Move. You move. Move, Max. Well, Rude. I'm sorry. I had to move that fan because I kept hearing the hum in the background while we are recording. And it was driving me nuts. Cowboy it's called, butts drive me nuts. But I that's crazy. Help. It closed. <clears throat> Still intact. This just got flooded. Yeah, it just got flooded, but like there's alligators in the water. A <laughs> uh, little alligator never hurt anybody. Um, and you need to guy. You need. I you need to guy. You need to go look these up because that's why I wrote them down because they looked really creepy. Like, can you stop? Sorry, I'm I had sorry. to adjust my mic. <laughs> All right. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean that to be so mean. Okay. So this is place. I can't talk. I'm sorry, guys. This is a place in Spree Park, Germany. Spree Park, Germany. <laughs> oh, is- yeah. Germany. Spree Park. We're going to have some fun, guys. So let's get scared at a scary theme park in Germany. I want to hit you. <laughs> oh, let's go buy a David Hasselhoff CD and jam to it while we're at the roller coaster. <laughs> Stop. Um, this communist era park opened in 1969 in East Germany, but it's closed in 2001 and left to the elements. It now features toppled dinosaur statues, rusting roller coasters, and a track leading to a surreal monster mouth. Um, That's always lovely. Yeah. So, Sorry. unlike the last place, this place is open for tours. Like, so basically this place closed down and earth took over and it rotted and rusted but they didn't make it like they left it how earth left it you know oh, what i mean like, yeah so they opened it like as a museum and like a tourist area but they didn't touch any of the actual buildings or buildings anything and stuff. Well, that's cool it. they left everything intact yeah still give it that good old creepy look that'd yes. be cool to go investigate go cool i mean cool to check out yeah it would I'm going to do one more, and then Dad can go. Okay, so this is a cursed amusement park, okay? This 
was described that looks like something out of a movie. Um, Lake Shawnee was reportedly built on an Indian burial ground. And that, wow, really? Ah, sorry, guys. Lexi, uh, when she comes over on the weekends, we do these podcasts and all that. Well, the kids aren't here, so I left the recording studio door open and... The washer is the washer's right outside that. And yeah, it's so like that's that's nobody taking a big pee pee. That's a that's the washer. That's the washer. Noise. My dryer's broken, so I do laundry over here. Um, <coughs> anyway, this place was built on an Indian burial ground, and in the 18th century, a a bloody confr- confrontation confr- confrontation. Thank you. Erupted between Native Americans and a col- colonial family who attempted to settle here. Over a century later. Um, the amusement park opened on the site in the 1920s um, and it closed in 1966 but there was accidental deaths of two young patrons including one on the spooky circular swing that still stands okay the circular swing got a pause that's the thing that literally it's the swings you sit in and it goes in a circle and it goes higher some say that it's the most popular spot for paranormal activity. <laughs> paranormal investigators is around Halloween. Um, the spot hosts a dark carnival. They do basically they do tours and stories and a, a maze and campouts. Um, yeah, it's basically one. I can't talk today. I'm so sorry, guys. Yeah. It's making me Before mad. Before this even started today, I was like, hey, let's do a podcast while you're here. That way you're going to try to rush, rush, rush and try to. Like, I couldn't even talk to him and catch him up without not. <laughs> like, <laughs> She's been all. The, well, it's been rainy and gray here all day. and it's just kind of. Uh, yeah. I'm glad it's over. Anyway, what I was trying to say was <laughs> those are all of mine for now. So, Dad, I'm going to hand it to you before I lose my mind. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go over Hyde Park in London, I believe. There's two places that use Hyde, that's called Hyde Park. One of them is an actual pet cemetery. Wait. Yes, it's an actual pet cemetery. I thought that was just in the movies. No. <laughs> It was founded in 1881 when gatekeeper Mr. Wilberg burned a cherry Maltese. Oh, Barry didn't burn it. Sorry. My bad. He burned a cherry Maltese Terrier in Victory Lodge's back garden. I had to Stop yeah, okay, so the dog's name is Cherry. Yes, the dog's name is Cherry, and he buried him here, and he was the first pet, so <clears throat> they just started burying their uh, pets there. And they continue to do it, and I think they had to shut it down here recently, they said, because it was basically overpopulated, because everybody was sticking their dogs there. And, of course, there's been reports of cats, uh, you know, like a cat, figure of a cat running around or a dog you know i don't know what i would do if yeah i think my dog but y'all look do. it up it's an actual pet cemetery it's called a hyde park pet cemetery and it okay. was founded because the gatekeeper there buried his dog there so isn't that just peachy i know that this is off topic and i'm sorry you guys can't see this um whenever like you're not reading and you have a chance watch max and the when the fan hits him he like eats the air oh he goes yeah and like licks the fan it's kind of funny but he doesn't cut <laughs> his tongue well he's got to get his tongue in there but i thought that was funny and i had to say something <laughs> i'm so sorry it's keep on right. talking now the other hyde park this is the uh, hyde park corner it's the hyde park corner station two station workers one night closed the place down and when they was uh you know on their shift they were uh, shutting everything down and looking around, and the uh, escalators went off all of a sudden. Around uh, 2.30, they heard a uh, commotion, and they went out to find one of the escalators had started up again. They were confused. There was no way for it to start by itself because they needed a key. 
Oh, to start it? Yeah, to go turn the uh, deal, and then you flip the switch, apparently. I didn't know that you had to... Um... Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah. When they were uh, back in the office uh, making tea, the room suddenly became ice cold, and one supervisor noticed his uh, friend had gone completely white and was uh, pressed against the wall. And uh, <clears throat> they asked him, did you see... He uh, he kind of stuttered and said he's seen a face loom through the door and peer into him, into the room. Uh-uh. And the station worker left his job and they, he never returned. Um, I don't blame him because I wouldn't again. Yeah. Yeah, they get stuff like that. Not, I mean, not, not so much physical stuff there, but they get a lot of uh, stuff being seen. Oh. But yeah, but they do get attacks like that. And that I guy like it never reached. Yeah. yeah, that guy never returned for work. I again, I don't blame him. It's you know. He's like, uh, screw you guys, I'm out of here. Yeah. Want me to do another one? Um, actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and go do another one. Go ahead. All right, this is Boblo Island in Oh, Ontario. I have not been writing the times down. That's fine. Oh well. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you to picture something because you need to get the image in your head. Okay, so picture an 1898 Victorian amusement park. Music from an organ grinder, um, women's skirts swishing around the dance hall, children's laughters echoing from the various newfangled rides, roller coasters. That's what that's what the park was. That's how what it sounds like. That's how it was, and that's how you know whatever. Um, the doors of it shut, um, in 1993, it was open for about a hundred years. Um, the area where it was is like now close to the public, but you can boat or kayak to the remains. Um, they say li you need to listen for like ghostly sounds of longing, uh, past visitors. Um. And I didn't know this, but like you can, there's places that you can like, the, of where the music park used to be. You, there's like cabins or whatever, like Airbnbs. You can rent those out. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's. I didn't know that. I was like, hmm. <coughs> Very interesting. All right, this is the Pripyat. Huh. P r i p y a t. Oh. Pripyat. Pripyat. Yeah. Pripyat? Pripyat. Uh, amusement park in your Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine. Ukraine. Okay, sorry. Lexi is a little bit. Huh, Sounds like out you've there. been doing some Ukraine. The. Okay. This involved a. I also need to do this. This is off topic, but I need to go over this with mine Stephanie's podcast because now that I'm thinking about it. Um. But this is one of the stories of the uh, aftermaths of the nuclear distract disaster of oh Chipotle or Cher Chernobyl, Cher whatever it starts with Chernobyl, Chernobyl, whatever. Yeah. Um, one of the fourteen historical places that are now abandoned. This is one of them. Many of the power plant workers and their families lived in the town where the park was set open for May Day celebration on May 1st, 1986. But the explosion at the plant occurred just a few days prior on April 26th, so it, the, um, the celebration never happened. Although, according to some reports, officials opened the park early to keep residents busy before evacuation orders were given, and once the announcement was made to leave, everyone fled almost immediately, leaving the park and everything else to the elements. Since then, the abandoned Ferris wheel has become a symbol of an ill-fated town, and then today, you can apparently take the tour, take a tour of, like, how it looks. Um, and I guess there's places you can stay, too, but I'm not 100% sure. Hmm. So, but, yeah. Me and my sister have a podcast, and I want to do Chernobyl, or however you're supposed to say it. Yeah. I want it because, yeah. That's anyway. pretty cool. I like that Chernobyl story. That freaking, <coughs> they had to Sorry. evacuate the whole town, and it's like an abandoned town. Mm-hmm. All right, this is, I'm going to do one more, and I'll give it to you. This is, I'm so sorry if I butcher this, Bongalow Land in Florida. A Bongo Land? Yeah, Bongo Land. Bongo Land. Okay. 
this Whoa. thing, th this amusement park, was built on the grounds of a pre-Civil War mill. Um, and it opened in the late 1940s and featured concrete dinosaurs and animals, including the park's namesake, namesake monkey, Bongo. I can't hawk today. You can't hawk or talk. Talk. <laughs> um, and it was a re replica of a Native America. And oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, guys. A Native American village and a kitty train. Um. This attraction closed in 1952, and then it was abandoned for decades. Today, the gardens surrounded the old surround the old pre prehistoric creatures, the dinosaurs, which are my. <laughs> which remain as spooky relics of the park's past. But beware, uh, you have to be careful of the falling di like falling dinos because like it is falling apart. There's been, I guess, instances where like parts of dinosaurs have like fell on people. Oh my God, can you imagine a head or an arm falling on somebody? Eh, that, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> but like it's, again, this is one of the things where like Earth is taken over, so like it kind of looks creepy. But, all right, I'll let you go. Wow. Okay, I am going to be going over the ghostly lady of Bruce Castle. And guess what she wears? They also call her guess. I'll give you one guess. They call her the lady in white. I was about to say the lady in white. <laughs> yeah. She seems to be a recurring person everywhere around the world. Okay. Yeah, she's in a lot of stories. <coughs> I forgot I had water. I mean, Nobody that washer is that. shaking. <laughs> shaking the clothes clean. It's a shaking it good. Oh, okay, here we go. Are those sources such as the Pegram, speculate, spec, <coughs> speculate yeah. that the uh, Constantina, that Constantina committed suicide in the in, face. In the face of, I cut my words off. Uh, con continue. Mm. Face of con continuing relation, uh, continuing relationship between her and the Duchess of. Some some more set. Some more some more set. Somerset. Somerset. But there's no U. It's O. Some, Somerset. Somerset. Yeah. Somerset. Somerset. Little is known about her life in the circle of her early death, and her ghost reportedly haunts the castle. Mm. Yes. It's. It's very haunting, baby. Let me tell you. You can go again. Okay. The earliest uh, record reference to the ghost appeared in 1858, almost 200, almost 200 years after the death of the Tottenham and Edm oh. Edmonton Advers adver advisors advertiser. or advertisers. Just a warning, he cut all his words off on the story. Yeah, on the side, so yeah, I didn't realize that before I hit OK to print. That's why I need to quit staying up so late. And, and I've showed you how to do it without the I keep forgetting. Sorry. And, and, and I participate some stuff sometimes and I can't remember. Okay. A lady of our a lady of our acquaintance was introduced at a party to an Indian officer who hear who hearing that she came Tottenham earlier at no eagerly asked if she could if she had seen the ghost of the uh, ghost of the lady of the Bruce Castle some years before he told the following story by another officer when in camp, uh, in, in camp on March in India. Sorry. One of the lords of the uh, castle married a beautiful lady and while she was yet in her youth had been seized with a violent hatred against her with f 
former with uh, whether formerly jealous jealousy or not it's not known her first uh, her first convict he first convicted her to the upper part of the house and seduced in a seduced in forcing her way out and fl- uh, basically jumping out the window with her baby in her arms that's nice yes okay. where was I at convicted okay jump okay rooms see I lost my damn place oh, okay okay she okay so so she jumped this woman jumped this woman jumped out of the room with the with her baby in her arms and every year as the I don't know as the female cry is heard floating away on a indomitable blast hmm I think I skipped the whole fucking sentence <laughs> I really think I did we'll see what screwed up guys when I printed this I cut half my words off on the right so when I get to the end that's why I'm like trying to piece together what it says so hang with me how much longer how much longer is the other page like that too i hope not because if it is oh no it's not and this one's almost done i thought we just lost power i was like no (laughs) dad okay no i thought it stopped recording i was about to be mad sarah hera died in 1692 and was buried in Westminster Abbey in Hare in 1708 to be succeeded her grandson Henry Hare the third Baron Colleran and Henry Hare was a leading anchorary anchorary residing only briefly in the castle between lengthy hour lengthy tours of the uh, Europe. The ghost of the woman is seen in the windows of the 16th century uh, castle, which was originally known as the uh, Lordship House because this is where the Lordship and the like the governors and stuff at the time, this is kind of like their getaway house. Mm. Could you imagine having a fuck another castle? Uh, I'm going to go to the castle for the... I'm going to go get away from the castle this weekend. I need to get away from all you peasants. (laughs) I mean, that's fucking ridiculous. Another castle to go stay in while you get away from everybody. Jesus. Mm. Okay, this goes back to that... And then it talks about again how that woman committed suicide. And how her ghost is there. But she's not seen. You can just hear her voice. And they say on a dark November nights, you might catch a glimpse of her sitting there staring out of the window really creepy at you. That's nice. Just look so, over and <clears throat> you not only got the woman in white, you got this other woman. And see, that's what they would do. Uh, apparently, this uh, guy was a governor or something, and he was going to go hide his wife in the house up there in one of the towers at the getaway house the castle and you know that's what they would do heck one guy had his wife's head cut off oh henry king henry the i don't know which one but yeah i think he had his head's wife head's wife cut off because he wanted to really divorce her and marry someone else they would do shit like that or they'd just have mistresses everywhere be screwing like crazy like horn dogs (laughs) pretty much all right Okay, I'm going to switch my topic to Haunted Playgrounds because, like, I'm going to mix them up a little bit because I just want to. And YOLO, no. (laughs) All right. So, this is, you know, going to be about Haunted Playgrounds now. Ew. So, don't go to the playgrounds. This one is called Laughter Turns to Screams in Sheldon Road Park. Locals say the small park on Sheldon Road in Madison, Alabama is home to several ghost children. At night, happy kids can be heard playing and laughing, but eventually the sounds turn to screams of terror. That's all. That was it. 
Yeah, these are, by the way, these are short, so I'm going to do like five at a time. Because, yeah. Wow. But, that place, you know, is, has a lot of a lot of research. Okay, you know what? My When I do these, I do them a little like this so I can have a lot. That's why I do it like this. All right, this is the spirits of the 1920, 1920s students. The spirits of 1920s students haunt DeCito grade school. That's a tongue twister. Say that again? I didn't hear you. No. Come on. In 1925, a major tornado. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's how I say tornado. I say tornado. We always say that playing around. Oh, no, the tornado alarm's going off. Wow, I can't believe I just said that. Tornado. That major, just showed your redneckness. <laughs> major tornado ripped through the town of Desito, Illinois. Over 300 teachers and students hiding in the basement of DeCito grade school were killed when the building collapsed on top of them. Oh, shit. Damn. Sorry, I haven't read this since I printed it off. Yeah. It's been a little bit, so. That's crazy, because you're going to the basement to save you. Yeah. Not to kill you. They said, they say since then, children's voices have been heard laughing and playing, and apparitions of the children wearing, you know, out of date and torn clothes have been seen on the playground. Hmm. This one's called Scream Sound on a Playground Built on Top of a Insane Asylum. In the 1950s, Sunland Hospital was built in Orlando, Florida to treat tuberculosis patients. After a vaccine was discovered, the building became a mental hospital and it eventually was shut down for abusive patients, neglect, and a rodent, emphasi a rodent infestation and unsafe surgical conditions. The abandoned building was believed to be haunted, and ghost hunters brought <coughs> in to experience the odd sounds and lights people claimed to see. But after a curious trespasser fell down an, an elevator shaft, the building was completely torn down. A playground was built on the site, and it may have in in inherited the ghostly activity. Visitors say they witnessed things moving on their own and heard the sounds of children crying and screaming. <laughs> mm, lovely. That's what I don't get. If, like, you know that's what's there, why would you go, what would you, why go from, like, that to, let's put a playground. Yeah. Like, let's put a mattress store. Don't put that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a haunted playground for the grandkids. No. One day. <laughs> I, I, she's, I'm not going to have grandkids anytime soon. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. Huh. Guys. That's what I'll no. do. <laughs> I'll buy haunted playground equipment. You No. Yeah. No. That'd be such a nice grandpa. <laughs> Stop. I bought this haunted swing set, kids. Look, you don't even got to push yourself. Someone it does push it itself. You. <laughs> uh, okay, this is called the Swings Move by Themselves. Speaking of, <laughs> and Dead Children's Playground. Dead Children's Playground is located in the middle of Maple Hill Cemetery in Huntsville, Alabama. It's believed to be the most haunted place in the entire state. Um, some say that paranormal activity comes from the restless spirits. The bodies of several abducted children were found there in the 1960s. Others claim the ghosts. Others claim the ghosts are those of the people buried in the graveyard, because there's you know a graveyard like right there. Visitors to the playground at night have rem <coughs> have reported seeing swings move by themselves, noticing dust rising as if like the foot like footsteps, you know. Mm -hmm. um, hearing children's voices. Um, they spot orbs of flashing lights, and like at, they're like just at the height of a child. So, yeah. <coughs> Never know what you gonna get. How many stories do you have? Two. I got more. I'm came prepared today, bitches. I've got at least all together five. No. I've already done what three. I don't even know honestly. I didn't count. Let me do one more and then you can go. All right. All right. This is my last one for right now. My this last though. <laughs> a ghostly child continues to swing in Argentina. Locals in a format Argentina claim a certain playground swing is haunted. Apparently, it has been swinging by itself for five years, even when people try to stop it from moving. The swing is believed to be used by the ghost of a small child who died nearly before the playground was built. This is poor kid wanting to swing. He's been doing it for five years. He's like, I just want to swing. Okay, I got an idea. You can, uh, I'll do these two. And then you can do this one. And then I'll do the last one. No. 
do it real quick. Okay, we're back. We got it figured out. I thought she was running running out of stories, but she's not. And sorry for that sound in the back. That was the dishwasher. I'm um, dishwasher. The she clothes washer the on house. spin. So we shut the door to the studio, so we won't be hearing that bullshit anymore. Yeah. All right. Now I'm gonna go over. Uh, I'm gonna go over the London's operating theater. Theater. See, back then. That was the theaters back then. Yeah, because what they would do is you'd put your body here. And people would look and take notes and see what you're doing. Because back then, they was just learning as they went. They didn't know what the fuck they was really doing. That's true. And then they would willingly have people come in that were really sick. And they'd try to fix them or do this. And there was basically paid them to get, be get fucking guinea pigs. This was basically how we started with our medicine. If it wasn't... I mean, I know it's kind of brutal what they did and mean. But, but if they didn't do really that, then we wouldn't know today. what... Yeah. I'm not trying to say it's okay because it's science but i don't know people was <clears throat> willingly doing it but you know some people did get in there or killed because they'd always want fresh bodies so they'd go uh rob graves mm. and bring them back so it's always nice. yeah okay the operating theater is located in on uh, in the garret of saint thomas church just outside of the just outside of the London Bridge, the theater was in operation from 1821, but there was no such thing as anesthesia back then, which is like stuff that knocks your ass. Yeah, out. locks your ass out so they can cut on you. So they feel everything. Yeah, so you could imagine the extreme pain these patients went through during these operations and everything. The operations would have taken place on the. Uh, darkest war oh on the darkest ward and while uh, operations were taking place up to a hundred students would be watching taking notes many of the operations would have been amputations and as you can see or as you can imagine not all of the amputations and stuff went right and the patients didn't survive <clears throat> well then when Surgeons were working. They tried to make the uh, procedure as quick as possible, and the rooms were soundproof, so not everyone could hear uh, the loud screams from the patients. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. However, though, alcohol was available to make the patients not so cautious as they would be uh, worked on. Some, <coughs> and some Sorry. say the souls of the patients... That sadly died there are meant to haunt the opera operating theater and its ground. And many staff members have walked into the operating theater as they was about to lock up after uh, operating uh, opening hours. And have smelt a strong smell of blood and as well as hearing uh, faint screams in the distance. Nope. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> There, the there's there's not only the one ghost. There are meant to haunt the theater, as the woman in white has been seen in numerous f occasions. What the fuck? <laughs> <coughs> I'm not laughing because she died or anything, guys. But the woman in white. She's oh my god! So this is in London, things. and this is the second story that I've covered about a woman in white. Today, yeah. Alone. <laughs> she lingers in the corridors of the uh, former St. Thomas Hospital. That's just crazy. <coughs> a woman in white. Mm. <laughs> Staff and customers have reported seeing her. They, they've they said when she's around there, there is a calm presence and they don't feel scared of her at all. Many people have started questioning who this ghost actually is. And they wonder if it is actually Floris Nightingale. Oh. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Well, that's it for the operating theater. Mm hmm. Um. Let what? me finish my page and then we can talk to them. What? Wrap it up then? Yeah. Yeah? Because you can do one more. Because I still got three I can save for the next. 
say because I let me just do like well one here more. Well, I'll do one more because I after you go I got that short one to do and then bam do I got yours, these I two wanna, do yours because I want to be last oh uh, I want to be last okay we're gonna talk about uh, the Spaniard Inn. The pub was established in Charles and Charles. Whoa, well, was mentioned in Charles Dickens' uh, Pink Wink Papers, and is said to be the home of the ghost of the in infamous robber Dick <coughs> Turpin. He has said to roam the upstairs room of the pub, constantly making racket with his bags and clashing throughout the night. He's not the only ghost in the uh, that is on the premises, as the downstairs area is said to be haunted by a man known as Black Dick. <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you imagine? Black Dick's chasing me. Black Dick. I just I seen can't. Black Dick. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that's childish, but that's funny. <laughs> Who? Uh, he was ran over. By horse and cart outside of the premises. Speaking of horses, the parking lot is also believed to be haunted by Turpin's trusty horse. So be careful when you go park your car. You might get kicked by a ghost. A horse ghost. I would say, not just a Wouldn't that be crazy? An actual ghost kicked a, a horse, kicked the shit out of you. I'd like to get that out on security tape. That'd be funny. <laughs> that, no, I would never watch that. <laughs> That's crazy, though, man. Did you hear that chair? Yes. That's right. why I'd like to go to places with a lot of history, because there'd be so much stuff there. Yeah. It'd be amazing to check out. All right. Let me do my two, and then we'll talk to you guys some more. All right. This is the phantom bodies that hang from the trees in Hummel Park. Hummel Park Playground is in Omaha, Omaha Nebraska. Nebraska. That's what I was trying to figure out what, because I... Well, there's only one Omaha I know of. Well, I did not That's know. That's a famous Omaha. Um, it might be one of the most haunted places in the state. But say that every time. Most people, uh, many people were rumored to have been lynched there in the past. You Does that lynched? mean hung? Yeah. Another word for hung is lynch. That's why they used to say we're going to have a lynching. Oh. Oh, and the park served as a dumping ground for several murder victims. Yay. <laughs> Ooh, isn't that sweet? Um, visitors have been frightened by phantom figures, floating lights, screams, and ghostly bodies that hang from trees. Several animals have reported reportedly been found sacrificed as well. Nice. Yeah. Handprints appear at Devil's Playground. This is the next one. This is my last one. A Colgary schoolhouse reportedly burned to the ground decades ago, killing several children and inspiring the lead of Devil's, the legend of Devil's Playground. Visitors come to the site. Well, we were fine, so I started talking about the Devil's Playground. Yeah, I'm telling you, every time we do, uh, it only does it on the Ghost Podcast. We do the Ghost Stories Told from the South. Every time we go to do this podcast, it cuts off at least once or twice, and we was fixing to be done. I didn't even, I wasn't going to mention it because every time I do, it fucks up. Yes, and we're we was almost done. just about to be done and wrap it up and talk to you guys, and it started. Uh, she's right gonna before talk about I start talking devils. about the ghost stuff. Yeah. So, the, devil stuff. the visitors can hear children playing and laughing. <laughs> Animal bones are sometimes found placed in strange patterns. Patterns. Animal, animal and bones. Hand, and handprints appear on car windows sometimes. For no damn reason. All right, that's all I got. Um, I do have more, but we'll save them back, guys. Yeah. Um, we'll, we will, uh, next time she comes over, next time she comes over, it'll probably be next weekend. But we will do a good hour one for y'all. We'll talk about some good stuff. I've just been crunched on time, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. Make sure you guys check us out. Um, I don't know if... Is the YouTube ch updated? Uh, I haven't yet. Y'all okay, need well, to go check out our YouTube. And I noticed, too, on Spotify, our subscribers are getting more. Ooh, So y'all keep guys. on hitting them subscribe buttons and download stuff. Um I'll get that YouTube stuff caught up. And we're going to start doing more like videos on here to put on there too. Yes, we are. And I know my social media things have not been the greatest. But I did follow a whole bunch of people back the other day. Um, yay. So, yeah. 
and thank you guys for going to our page <laughs> and liking our stuff. So yes, we appreciate and I want to give a shout out to everybody out there because our numbers keep going up and everybody keeps listening and keep lis- keeps listening. I think it's awesome. Yeah. And I was thinking about doing this from other podcast and this one. I was thinking about doing a GoFundMe page for the podcast. Hey. Yeah. That you might. don't have to contribute, but hey, you know. If you just little want something, to. Show us a little love, but I'll, I'll look into maybe getting that going and all that good stuff. And maybe eventually we was thinking about maybe doing some shirts or something. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I have to do <laughs> school stuff. Yeah. And I got to do some more research for stuff for next week. So. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well. Um, Don't forget, check us out on Spotify, Stitcher, uh, Pandora, iHeart, uh, iTunes, YouTube, Amazon, Amazon, Google. Literally we're pretty much everything. Anywhere. Yeah, we're uh, pretty much everywhere now. Even YouTube, baby. Check us out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go to our Facebook, uh, Ghost Stories, Told from the South, Instagram. So, yeah. We're uh, doing pretty good, guys. Thanks for listening. This has been Ghost Stories Told from the South. And I and this is your co-host, Lexi LeBooth. And I am your host, Steven LeBooth. <laughs> we will see your cool cats later. Don't get too scared now. Bye. Bye. <laughs>